cheat and let you like Josh Allen and just run over Betty over. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then I could then I could take it, you know what I mean? <laughs>
Yeah. But uh, I mean, a lot of guys stepped up going over Malcolm Koontz uh, a little bit today. One of the things that really like stood out to me this game about Malcolm Koontz is like we've seen him turn speed to power and like that's kind of how he wins as a pass rusher, right? Like that's his primary move. What he started doing this game is like all of his wins like weren't speed to power, but he was selling it to get Rashawn Slater to stop his feet and mm-hmm. start to add a little bit more to his pass rush arsenal. And I, that was what got me really excited is like, okay, not only is this guy like we knew this was a good aspect of him, but now he's starting to put it together. Now he's starting to get a little bit of the the nuances of being a, a pass rusher and starting to set people up and, and throw counter moves and all that good stuff. So that was probably the most exciting thing for me to see too. Um, Jack Jones, the other guy we're going to be going over to, um, those, are t- I mean, those are two P- highest PFF created guys for, for the Raiders. Uh, Jones, obviously the pick six helps. Uh, yeah. I was a lot of Jones's plays like came when the game was out of hand, but the game was also out of hand, like <laughs> three possessions into it. So <laughs> that was kind of most of the guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, very yeah. few people, uh, that I thought played poorly, uh, poorly in the game. It was just an all out great effort and. Great, great, great pass rush. I think that's one of the biggest things that stood out about this game as a whole, too, is the Raiders pretty much dominated the Chargers offensive line uh, all night. Like defensive tackles were were getting done. Jerry Tillery had had a, a nice little sack there, too, on a, a miscommunication by the Chargers up front. And uh, uh, Jenkins had a pretty good game, obviously. We'll see his uh, we'll see his thick six, which I don't know. We'll watch this. We'll watch that, and we'll. I, I'll let you be the judge if he got even close to twenty miles per hour, like some <laughs> on the sideline reclaiming all that. But, uh, Thick six, man, is is a uh, that's that's a that's a legendary name right there. Thick six, I like that. Got the thick six, the thick six. All right, um, yeah, because I mean, I, you know, the defense has been playing well. I mean, let's talk. I want to talk about the defense a little bit because I know everybody's like, like Patrick Graham should be a head, head coach. He's, he should be, uh, you know, coach of the year. But you know, the defense. I you know, I think this game against the Chiefs is going to be big for them for actually what Patrick Graham is actually doing because you know they, they played Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins last week, played <laughs> East Stick this week, right? Uh, they played Tommy DeVito who who but he. The, he had a bad game and then decided he wanted to have the Jersey juice and then he'd been playing well since then. And then, yeah. and then they played Zach Wilson, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the game I mean, sucked this week, but yeah, I think, I think this week too, like just how much, like kind of when we were talking about going back to our chiefs for like re- review, like how Andy Reid just pretty much had like an answer for everything that, that um, Patrick Graham was calling, like, having a good game, like having a good game is going to be extremely crucial for him just to kind of prove that, I guess he's not predictable and can't be found out a little bit. Cause uh, yeah. like you said, the last couple of weeks at least have been better um, for the defense and the play calling where they're not getting like exploited where it wasn't like I'm watching the chiefs just basically throw it to where the, the Raiders weren't every single play and looked like they knew what the play call was and they were in the huddle. So yeah, I think that, I think yeah. to your point, like, him proving himself against an elite offense like Kansas City, an elite play caller on the other side, and Andy Reid would be huge. But I, I definitely do think Project Graham has had a hell of a season considering what he's been working with for the majority of the year. So, oh, yeah, see, see, I mean, that hell yeah. But you know, some, some people are talking about like we don't need to add that many players, like hell no, let's get him some talent let's get him some top-notch players and then guess what if it's top 10 now guess what it's going to be with better players so yeah. um you know the defensive line is more set than anything if anything that is really like a focus the more i watch it because I, I like adam butler i really do that i think butler's yeah. having a good season he, he's showing that he could be a good pass rusher in the nfl um you know if they want to get greedy there in the draft that's fine but you know, it, it, it's it's more like they need, like, one more pass rushing defense tackle. If they feel like that's Adam Butler, they can keep him growing. That's fine. But, you know, they moved Tyree Wilson inside. They got those other two guys. You know, they got Koontz, who's coming on. They got, of course, you got Max Crasby's not in the question at this point. <laughs> so, like, it, it's – that is a pretty good group. There's those three. You see Tyree Wilson coming on inside. That tells you a lot, right? So he yeah. can work inside. I think, you know, it, even if you bring a new defensive coordinator, he's going to be like, okay, this defensive line is legit. I got these guys already signed in a contract for at least Koontz is one more year. And I don't know what they do with Koontz if he takes off his next couple games. But, yeah, I mean, they, they, it, it, 
that's the only place it's really set. I mean, linebackers, I'm still a little funny about. Yeah, I need some linebackers. I need some corners. I do. We yeah. need some corners. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, they need some corners. Let's, let's not get Jack Jones ahead. had a great game, but they need some corners. But yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think Maybe. Butler's a free agent. I think Butler's a free agent too. And so is Nichols. So, and Butler, he's good at like, He's funny. Like he's really good at manufacturing pressure. Like we'll see one rep. Like he's really good at manufacturing pressure for someone else, but mm. he's not like that great at winning on his own. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. funny. And then against the run, it's it's he's like he, he's a third down defensive tackle. That's for yeah. sure. So, yeah, you just yeah. say he's awful against the run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but that's what I'm saying. Like if you know if if they don't draft a quarterback, right? I mean, you got the the guy from uh from Illinois that I really like. I, I'm just eyeing him. I just you know I just. Because I feel like even if he can't play the run, I know he's small. I know you, I know that you're to put out how small he is. Oh but no, I even, love yeah, yeah. But but even then, you just add him or something like that, man. It might make they, they, that might be a great defensive line, like how the yeah. Jets have it. You know what I mean? So I, I think I think they're they're really close to that than um, anything else on defense. Yeah, I mean, defensive line is definitely the strength right now. I mean, you got Spillane, who I think is playing well for a linebacker. To my Diablo, I mean, we, I, he's another guy I could have done this week who had a really good game this past week. But obviously, as we've uh, we've shown, shown throughout the season, not not uh, great in coverage and more up and down, more down than up, th- to be honest with you. But, um, I mm-hmm. mean, safety, they've got, they got some do- a couple of quality good players. And, uh, yeah. and Trevon and Merrick and, uh, and Marcus Epps. And then it's really just – getting some massive upgrades at corner because they really need a lot of talent there, especially with uh, seeing as Amit's their number one right now and he's a free agent. Yeah. And, uh, like, let's be honest, not a not a legit one, number one corner. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, be, I, mean uh, I don't know how many games you're going to win. You feel like, you know, comfortably you're going to win if he's number one. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. This, this, that's what I'm talking about, being aggressive. If, if the Bears are really stupid and they let Jalen Johnson go, which I hope they are. I hope, I hope Ryan Poles is an idiot. Because that would be the dumbest thing he ever did. So it, it, hopefully they let him go. And the Raiders just give him like a 22 mil, man. I, I mean, I don't know who we got to get rid of. Oh, man. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, let's get into the defense. We're talking defense. Let's get into it, man. Let's do some defense first. Some defense first. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And then we make it big. All right. Let's go. All right. So, yeah, one of the things that I'm going to kind of point out throughout this is this is a look that the Raiders are doing a lot uh, against the Chargers. Just kind of going with the five man front to kind of mess with the protection scheme a little bit. Uh, that'll be a little bit more relevant later. But this is one of, one of the first rushes from Coons of the day. And what I wanted to point out, like, too, like this one's not even the best one. A little bit of what I was talking about, where he starts selling the speed of power. It's subtle, but you're going to see him kind of take one inside jab step. And that's going to get Slater to stop or slow down his feet. And then, two, nice little hand swipe. Boy, that mm. bend is dirty. Oof. Like, Look here at the top of the rush. Woo! I mean, he turned a 90-degree corner right here. Like, that's – this is a leap bend right here, guys. And, two, I like the little shoulder dip to lean into it and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Mm-hmm. All right. This can be actually a rep against the run, which I will say Malcolm has a lot more work to do. Uh, still has a lot of work to do against the run, but he's growing. Like, this play, I think it's going to be an outside zone, if I remember correctly, from the Chargers. Yep. And he's going to take on uh, this little scoop block from the from the uh, tight end and tackle here, and get more block from the tight end here. And as you can see, like he's initially going to step inside, but then he recognizes the scheme and starts working back outside. Uses a long arm to go set the edge, and that's part of what makes that running back or Austin Eckler cut it back into Adam Butler, who, of course, after I just saying how bad of a run defender he is, <laughs> ends up making a play. So. Again, still not perfect from Koontz as far as defending the run. Um, and obviously, this is against a tight end, so I'm not going to put too much weight into it. But this is a good rep where you like to see it for a guy that's maybe starting to become an every down player. But again, still more of a pass rusher at this stage. Did he fumble in that play? Is that a fumble? <laughs> oh, stick back. I honestly didn't pay attention. Did he fumble there? <laughs> Or did he, no, like... he was down. He was down. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like... yeah, his back was down, and then he let it go. Uh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. All right. So this one's going to be a little bit better of him turning, selling that turning speed to power. I mean, he actually engages with them. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> that bend. <laughs> like, he might be a little bendier than Max Crosby, if I'm being honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, too, and that's what I like, too. This is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, 
like he's going to engage with Slater right here. And like mm-hmm. you can tell he's purposefully like he's going to at this point, he's already kind of got his hips moving back outside. He's trying to sell that what we we're talking about, speed to power and getting Slater to stop his feet. And that creates the short corner. Again, ball's got to be out. Get a little uh, quarterback hit on here. It's the bend, though. I mean, the, the bend is what makes it crazy because even if he the way he ex- executes his mute executes the move is because of the bend, because Slater just ain't ready for that. He wasn't ready for that bend at all. Oh, at all. Yes. Absolutely. Two, and I love the little burst of speed too after he get turns the corner to like kind of change it up and, and close on the quarterback. All right. So this one, let's see. Oh, similar rep. This time he just kind of does it with a long arm and takes it away. So again, selling that speed to power, selling his bread and butter, and then just getting a little rip move. And you could tell the uh this was a little bit later in the game. I want to say this was in the second half. I don't quite remember off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. you could tell the uh the pressure was starting to get to Easton stick. <laughs> he just bails out of a clean pocket or a relatively clean pocket well before mm-hmm. he has to. And again, that bend, man. Hunt him down, go around, make the play, get 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 the tackle on the stat sheet. That's what really matters, right there, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. There we go. That's a sack, right? Or is this just a normal tackle? No, it wasn't a sack. I think he crossed the line. Okay. Let's see. Well, it's maybe, like, maybe they gave us to Spoin. I don't know. He, I, he, he didn't get the sack on that one. Because the more I watch this man, I feel like he's like more than a ten sack guy. <laughs> I, think so. I I like the I like it. I like the confidence. All right, so this clip. I just kind of wanted to show again later in the game. And uh, I mean, this is the Max Crosby treatment. I mean, you'll see on the other side, Crosby's going to get chipped too. But like mm-hmm. they basically, the Chargers basically said, we're tired of this 51 dude kicking our ass all day. So he's going to get the chip from the receiver, obviously gets into Slater. And then not only that, but Zion Johnson, the uncovered offensive lineman, takes his eyes straight to him and ends up having to fight through, uh, basically getting triple teamed on that play. Mm. fight through a couple guys again just want to include that we'll see a, an example of that later um where i'll actually fight through it this one is the oh this one was my favorite little drum up by graham so again so i was talking about or alluding to a little bit earlier the raiders were going with this five-man front and what that does is that's going to force the offensive line into a man protection right we got left tackle on Koontz, um left guard on Wilson obviously center on the nose on Butler and then Saylor, the right guard here has to account for Robert Spillane uh, because Spillane's on the line of scrimmage in the protection scheme. And then obviously Pipkins on uh, on Max Crosby. So just kind of watch what I want everyone to do is just watch what happens to the right guard right here. Uh, Jamari Saylor and how his eyes go. Right. So at first he's got to check and make sure that Spillane isn't rushing. Right. That's his first clear. Once he sees Spillane drop into coverage, Naturally, what you're going to do is you're going to take your eyes to one of the best pass rushers in the league and Max Crosby and go help out your right tackle. But what that does on the other side is we got a little line game going here with Malcolm Koontz looping around on the inside. And that's going to open up this massive gap or this massive pass rush lane in the, in the A gap for Koontz to go get an unblocked pressure and flush Easton Stick out of, the top, out of the pocket. Now, what I do like about Koontz, and we've seen this a couple times throughout the year, if you guys remember me talking about it, is watch how when he loops around on this slunt, he's going to gain a little bit of ground vertically as he's moving laterally. That's a testament to like his athletic ability, his agility, and that puts more pressure on the center and is going to test that center's ability to react. Also, my guy Adam Butler, this is what I was talking about, about him being good at setting up pressures. We've seen this a few, few times throughout the year. Excuse me there. Getting away with a little bit of defensive holding, but hey, it's, only, it's only defensive holding if they call it, right? They never call that, man. They never and exactly, it. exactly. Do it until they call it. Well, it's, it's, uh, how I would teach it, but again, and then Easton Stick throws on the run, one hops it to uh, who is that Everett over there? So that's exactly what you want, wanting and hoping for. So here's going to be Koontz's second sack, and again, see the same kind of look. They're chipping both edges here. Going to chip on Max Crosby, same guy over here from Malcolm Koontz, 82. Chip him. Use a nice little cross chop. Not as impressive, Ben, but again, getting chipped a little bit harder to win around the edge. And I will say the reason why this is a sack is because Crosby wins the inside and forces uh, Stick to start to roll out. But swipe at the ball again. Now you tell me, Marcus. Does that look like 20 miles per hour? 
Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> I think they had him at like just under 15, which is not bad for a 320 pound dude. But when they're talking about uh, him hitting 20, I'm like, brother, you ran an eight second 40. I mean, I mean, Joshua Kelly didn't try too hard, man. I feel like Joshua Kelly could have kept, could have caught him if he really, like, you know, you oh, know yeah. put some effort in. <laughs> he was like, you know, what? there were a few plays where, uh, you could tell the Chargers had quit. This being one of them, like the ball's on the ground, and we got far what four offensive linemen just standing around. Five of them. It's like a Slater looking bro. at their quarterback on the ground. Slater, like, the ball's out, bro. He's like, he's like, where's Herbert, yeah. man? Herbert would have the ball out already. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I had it around the corner. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's go. All right, moving on a little bit to some Jack Jones here. Again, this is a little bit later in the game, third and four, so a big situation where you don't want to give up the um, any or really any completions down the field. Uh, anything will kind of beat you. What I like too here is you can kind of tell he senses something's up, like he's in press coverage against this is Gerald Everett, the tight end over here, and then they're going to motion Joshua Palmer out to the out to his side. And what I love too is look how much more physical Jack Jones is than. Uh, our guy like Mark, a guy like Marcus Peters, where he takes it too. He takes the fight to Gerald Everett here. I mean, he's probably giving up what 50 pounds or something like that, 40, 50 pounds of this guy, and ends up uh, holding his ground and, and again, um, being a little bit more physical than uh, than Everett is. And then the Chargers are basically running a screen here, right? Where they're trying to get to the flat, <coughs> hoping that uh, Everett would be able to clear out Jones, but he's right there. Ends up making the pat tackle and short of the sticks, and the Chargers have to punt. All right, his next route rep, he's going to be in uh, coverage against Quentin Johnson, who I know is not having a great year. Uh, but one thing Quentin Johnson was good at, at TCU was running these go routes and kind of um, winning down the field a little bit. What I like too is like you can see that little uh, that little leverage step or that little fake to the inside by Johnson. Jones doesn't bite, trusts his leverage, trusts his eyes, trusts his instincts. And two, like someone asked me, I think it was last week, you know, what I look for in cornerbacks, and I was talking about hip mobility. Mm -hmm. Watch this when Johnson breaks to the post. Like That's perfect right there. Two, I also like how he uses his hands. But to be able to swivel his hips and just stay in phase without breaking stride, like that's special right there. This is why we were hearing about this guy being a good talent as long as he can, you know, keep his nose clean off the field. And then two, of course, ball well and complete. All right. So this is going to be the pick six here. Again, you know, one thing that really stood out is I felt like Jones really hit the film room this week and knew what was coming a little bit. Uh, I don't, I don't remember if he was on the chargers or if he was on the Patriots when uh, they played the chargers earlier this year, maybe that helped a little bit, but obviously he sees, Hey, this is Austin Eckler, really good pass catching back guy that they're going to try and probably get involved in the screen game. So he's going to motion in, kind of senses something's up. You can see he's already starting to to break downhill a little bit on the screen. And then two just runs right by, it's not 82, 82 had a rough one here. Runs right by his face. I mean, that's still, I still can't like, this is just beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Go up one hand it. I got the end zone view here too. I won't even talk over this. I just want I just want to watch it again because it looks sick. Whoop. I mean, underrated about this. Dude got up. I know. <laughs> That's a vertical Seriously. vertical right there. I'll take that every time. Seriously. All right. So another play. We saw this one earlier a little bit. This is the one where Koontz gets the pressure um and gets the quarterback hit on stick. But what I liked about this too is one, you'll see, get a little bit of see of uh, how the Raiders are kind of plastering everything defensively. And two, kind of the same thing, what we were talking about a little bit or a little bit ago against Johnson, like where he basically runs this route for Johnson, sinks his hips, uses his hands again. I mean, there's no room for, for Stick to throw that, even if you had the time to get it out. Mm -hmm. And the other reason why I wanted to include this is I've talked a lot about linebackers playing cover three and how you can kind of, how I want these guys to work for more depth. Watch Belaine here, who's going to start on the other side of the hash and has to get out to the flat because uh, um, Marcus Epps here is going to be the, the hook to curl defender. And what I want people to look at is like, this is exactly how you want to play cover three as a linebacker. Like, 
he's able to help Jack Jones on the uh, on the curl route here and take that away. And then if they throw it to, I don't know if that's Austin Eckler or one of their other backup running backs, that's fine. It's third and nine. We'll go up and rally and just make this tackle. Either Epps or him can come up and make that play. So this is one something that was really encouraging to me is to see them and to see a linebacker specifically basically play perfect cover three on top of what Jones is doing, basically in man coverage against Johnson and running the route for him. All right. And our last clip, another one that's not necessarily a big highlight, but wanted to kind of show the difference between Jack Jones and what we were getting from Marcus Peters earlier in the year. Uh, this is going to be a run play. You can see him start to creep up, creep up, creep up, and boom, goes in and gets willing to be a run and is willing to get involved in the run uh, in the run fit here and go up and actually make this tackle. I mean, if this is Marcus Peters. As soon as he saw this, he'd probably be halfway to the sideline. <laughs> and, I mean, again, doesn't make the play necessarily, but Robert Spillane's a little bit more of the tackler. But, hey, we're getting involved. We're mixing it up. This is what you want from a corner. Half a coin uh, run defense as a corner is just effort, and that's one thing that I think stands out about Jack Jones in the t- last two games is the game before against the Vikings, he missed a few tackles and wasn't as uh, – proficient but what i do like about him is that he's at least willing to go in and do this i like that i love to see the effort level and again going from the last guy that they had in there that's a that's a good thing to see from uh from a young corner so definitely yeah. a lot of good things two young players two guys that are on rookie contracts and uh you know have a bright future i think a little bit if uh if last thursday was any indication yeah uh, yeah I mean, Koontz was definitely impressive, you know, but Jack Jones was pretty impressive in some of the film too. Yeah. You, know, you know, you know, Jack Jones has a lot of ability, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of upside. He's only a second year player. Yeah. I think that's the upside with him. So, I mean, he definitely has a guy that I would feel like has a chance to be a starter next year, mm-hmm. but don't, don't, let, don't let him stop you from drafting more corners. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Worst case, so, you need another starter on the other side of him, especially if a Meek's not going to be back. And I, yeah. I mean, as much as we like a Meek, Amik is your th- third cornerback at best. Really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if Amik goes, I'd be all right, man. It, 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 it would. I mean, he might be pretty good somewhere else, but you know, he just has too many blown plays. I feel like he just kind of just, kind of just. It's freelances. All flip the coin, man. You never know what you're gonna get. Fifty-fifty. You know, he's either gonna get, he's either gonna get a pick six or give up six points. <laughs> Basically, how it is. So. Yeah. So I mean, that that's the issue with Amik, but um. I mean, he makes a lot of big plays, so so it's, it's all the big plays he makes. I mean, you, you don't know. I mean, a lot of these Raider players they might go out there and not find the money that they're gonna get. Like Illuminor, Jermaine Illuminor thought he was gonna get paid some right tackle money. He thought he was gonna get. I got my PFF grade. He's probably showing people his PFF grade, his pressures. And people are like, God, nope. And he's like, hey, hey Raiders. So you know, you never know what the meek yeah. do. Um, but yeah. Definitely, Jack Jones looks really good. Kuntz looks damn good as a pass rusher, man. That dude has figured yeah. it out. All if, right. if we, I, like I said, man, if we can start seeing, like, we've seen him, like, win around the edge, you know, every now and again, but, like, nothing consistently, like, with this the past weekend. Like, he's pretty much, like, in the past, when he wins, he had speed to power. If he can keep putting those performances together where, like, he's showing off more tools and, again, setting guys up, like, that's going to get me really excited for him next year, especially as a, as a pass rusher. And two, like he hasn't been playing bad against the run. He just hasn't mm-hmm. gotten many opportunities. Like if you look at his snap counts on PFF, I think in the last five weeks when, or last six weeks when he's like one of their top edges, mm-hmm. it, he, if you go back and look at it, he might take like 10 uh, snaps against the running a, a, a game, which is part of what's helping his grade a little bit. Cause it's like, he's only doing what he's really good at or mainly doing what he's really good at. Mm-hmm. But he's growing there at le- at the very least, where he can like kind of be a little bit of what like Yannick Ngakwe has been throughout his career. Where Ngakwe, you, you, like you don't trust him against the run, but he's serviceable enough that you can get by, and he's such a good pass rusher that you're not gonna take that guy off the field. So that's I kind of think the the projector or the trajectory that that Malcolm Kuntz could be on, where he can be a serviceable enough run defender that you can at least justify keeping him in the lineup. Or keep him on the field. Uh, I mean, you're being really nice to Yannick Guy. I say he can play the run serviceably. Yeah, you, you're being really nice. That's there. true. That's, That's fair. Very, very nice. Very nice. Great guy that you are, Matt. I don't I, know how true too nice. I'm too nice. Yeah, way, way too nice. So I was looking at uh, Mount Coon since week nine. Oh, damn, he, he's is 
top five. Since like yeah. week ten, he's had like at least four pressures every game. I think it is. He's got like twenty one. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. He has uh since week nine. I got. Is he nineteen? Since week nine? Just since just, just since week nine. Just just since Antonio Pierce became head coach, I kind of like I'd be splitting them up. You know, Josh gotcha. McDaniels is gone. Yeah. Forget him. <laughs> you, don't, you don't exist anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> week nine. It's a new era here. I don't, it doesn't matter who it is. It ain't you. So I don't even worry about what you did. But, yeah, he has 19 uh, pressures since then. Four sacks since week nine. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, man, he, he's he, he's turned the quarter. I mean, he, he's fit in BFF grade, right? I mean, yeah, he is. Uh, you sure that's right? 20. I felt like he had more than that. I mean, it's, it says I'm, I'm doing week nine through 15 as rushers. I don't know. Maybe I'll do this. <laughs> I hope I'll do this right. Yeah, but yeah, he 19. Um, but the, th- the thing is, it, is that him and Max, he has 19. Max has 20. It's, it's what you want right there. <laughs> that is nice. Good. That is nice. It doesn't even matter how, you know what I mean? Like, I love yeah. that. I look lo- because, because eventually, if that keeps happening, you can't double team Max Crosby. Yeah, I mean, you saw it a little bit there too. Like the the Chargers basically had to take two guys out of the route tree to to chip Max and to chip Coons. Like that's like, and that's part of the route reason why they couldn't find anybody open because two guys were spending the first two seconds of the play in pass protection and that can only really leak out into the flat, which is obviously is easier to cover. So when you only have have to cover two guys like that, that'll help out a bad secondary or a secondary that's lacking talent. And, and, and even when you look at it this way, I mean, this is, what's crazy about it is that he has 106 pass rush snaps to Max Crosby 189, and Max Crosby has one more pressure than he does. <laughs> so, so, so he Max Malcolm Coos is balling right now, you know. And to be honest, like you know, I was a big Malcolm Coos, big big Malcolm Coos guy coming out. But he was still a fourth round pick to me. I didn't think he'd be. I didn't think he was to be like. <laughs> I mean, I saw the bed, but like, yeah. Some of the stuff you were showing, Matt. I'm like, oh my god. I don't know yeah, what you're saying. I don't know what filter you have on there, but I have 23 pressures for him. Really? Yeah, I see, I'm so bad. These filters are. I, I, was, I suck at these. I, I got week nine to fifteen. Right? Did one, you skip one? Maybe. Maybe I probably did. No. I don't know. Hmm. Whatever. It, it doesn't matter. He, yeah, he's, I mean, balling. We, he, he's balling. He's <laughs> balling. <laughs> but but that's but that's what I'm saying. Like, so if you can get him and Crosby going, and then he's playing the run better, maybe he can start building some more snaps there. He can get a little stronger this off season. You got to give him like 11 million now. Just give him like 11 million. I mean, how much money does he make right now? He's making a lot of money. Give him like 11 mil. Right? I don't know because. Because because the price will go up. I feel like if you, we let him play another four week season after this, the price will be at Max Crosby range. So we got to give him like 11 mil right now, keep him calm, and he can complain later. That's where I look at it. I don't know about how you feel about it, Matt. <laughs> I mean, 11 mil is a, is a lot for a guy that we're talking about, like finally turning the corner in, 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 a, in the second <laughs> half of his third season. <laughs> 20 or 11, Matt. 20 or 11. But the way the way I would look at it is like I would almost rather see them like like see how he starts next year and then uh, see yeah. if they can get the, the get the deal done at, at that point because you don't ha- you're not in a rush to get it done. You know what I mean? Like he's mm-hmm. not going anywhere this year. Like if if he holds out, like that'd be pretty damn ballsy <laughs> for a dude who didn't start starting until <laughs> a few weeks ago and technically isn't starting right now because someone else is a they're playing more like odd fronts. Yeah, we came out of the game like that'd be ballsy to be like, yeah, no, I, I'm holding out for my new deal <laughs> as a guy who just arrived on the scene. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I don't know, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just saying it could keep him calm for a little bit. Then we, then we don't have to pay him twenty just in case you're wrong. Yeah, and you're like, oh my god, hey, maybe we don't have to pay him, and he just balls out, and he, then you have to pay him a whole bunch of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that's the thing. It, yeah. it, it, I don't know, man. That was some pretty damn good tape, Matt. I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. he's he is balling. All right, so let's get to this. Uh, get to the offense here. Let's get to uh, Trey Tucker and Dylan Parham. His impact on the center position. Let's get him in. Here. Okay. Um, 
All right, let's do this. All right, so let's start with Trey Tucker, who I thought, you know, definitely, I mean, technically, but production-wise, he had his best game of his career. So we're going to be looking at him here. This was just him running right by Trey Tucker. So let's go back a little bit. So on this one, what we're getting, we're getting two ends here. So uh, behind his little crossing route, okay? So we're getting an end from Adams. We're getting an end from Myers, okay? He's going to be running basically a, an over route. It looks like a post was basically an over route. Now, they're in cover six, okay? This is when I saw this on TV. I'm like, man, why are they playing man to man like this? But they're in cover <laughs> six here. This is cover six. You see Samuel down here. Now, there's nobody coming out here. That's why you see him kind of in this position. But just, just the way his leverage is, that's quarters over there, right? So it's, you know, quarter, quarter, half here. And that's why you got Derwin James taking the vertical as well. But – Aiden O'Connell does a great job of holding Gilman here on Myers, right? That yeah. is a pretty good read by him. Good job him keeping this area open so he can hit Tucker over the top. And, and this is a really good job by Tucker to track this ball because some people on Twitter are like, well, Marcus, why did you say it was a bad ball? Because I'm like, he could have just threw it here and he's just running as easy touchdown. He's running right there. We're like, oh, yeah, he touched down. But O'Connell throws it over here. Yeah. Up the field a little too much instead of keeping yeah. the path. And that's a great job of Trey Tucker adjusting. And, you know, we almost got on him about dropping that ball. But, I mean, that was not easy. I mean, this is not an easy ball from him. Because, because he, honestly, literally, if he just throws it over here. Throws it to the R. Yeah. He's walking in. He's he's walking. This is not a this is not a problem. But this is a great adjustment. Kind of shows tr Tucker's ball tracking skills, in my opinion. I mean, he's gonna catch that ball more cleanly, yeah. more cleanly. But I mean, he's mad. All right. Yeah. So, so you just see the speed, man. He just he just has so much speed. You really can't guard him one on one, to be honest. If you're in a slot and he's run over out, it's over. So we're gonna see him on you know a little bit of uh, some some Tyree Kill stuff right here, which I I like. You know the routes aren't very clean but i like the concept because he's so fast he's so fast he is man the michael davis is just falling over himself and no shot or is derwin he was eating he was killing derwin james bro is what happened to derwin what, what's wrong with him is he hurt uh, i think he just quit <laughs> well and derwin's <laughs> never like been like four three speed kind of type mm -hmm. of guy but all right so, so i think he's probably so, a little bit playing with too much cutting but so so with, with Trey Tucker, you just see the stiffness though. Still, this is why he's not he's not Tyreek Hill, and is why I always compare him to Deshaun Jackson a little bit more. But I I love I, I just I love how they got him set up like like he's Tyreek Hill right here. You get him going, you know. Derwin James is expecting some kind of speed route. He's not expecting him to stop here, but you still see from the route concept. It's just way too many steps for me, man. And then he like he gets a little off balance a little bit too. Like it's like eight steps there, <laughs> and, and and that's the thing is he's so stiff. But you can run routes like this because Derwin James is just terrified, right? And you yeah. can just see it. He's almost falling over himself. Easy completion there for Aiden O'Connell on first down. All right, now we'll go to the touchdown here. Scoreboard's still so funny to see. But <laughs> we're getting double crossers here, okay? Which I really I love this play call, to be honest. Play action double crossers right here on first and ten. Love it. So we're getting a cross here from Adams. We're getting a cross here from Trey Tucker. Now, I believe this is cover seven. I'm not 100% sure but it's, because it looks like man, but it's zone. So it has to be cover seven. I'm just taking a guess here. This is a guess. Play action. Cause you see, you see this guy, he's running with uh, DeAndre Carter here on the, the motion. But, you know, you see Samuel, he's in quarters here, kind of playing an area. And then you're just see Gilman. He, they're just so worried about Devontae Adams. They're going to leave a one-on-one. -on -one and Michael Davis play inside leverage with Trey Tucker here. So. And it's just easy, easy win. I mean, he, Michael Davis literally had no shot. I'm not going to lie. 
It could because to be honest, to be honest, at the top of this route, I mean, because he has a great release. This dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it later, but his release is nuts. But is at the top of this route. You kind of see the, the rounding off a little bit. But I do want to talk about, you know, against the Dolphins, O'Connell kind of didn't throw a great ball. Because even though he rounded off his route, he still let him put perfectly for a touchdown there. So we'll show him yeah, the time here. And, and, you know, you see Gilman, they're just so worried about Adams. You just left your boy inside leverage, Michael Davis. Which I don't know where he's drafted at, but he's definitely not a first round pick. With Trey Tucker, <laughs> <laughs> who runs like a four three with mad acceleration, it was it was easy win, easy read, touchdown. I like too how he kind of sold up the field a little bit before breaking to the inside. I like to get that little stair step. Yeah, back it up a little. Yeah. Oh, my he's just, he's just so stiff out of that break. And everything looks great until he runs a real route. Yeah, you can <laughs> see a really good from this angle right here. See, how, see how he leans into it too? Yeah. He's leaning. Like everything is great about his route running until he runs the route. It's just you know because I mean? <laughs> that's some savvy route running. But it's like just, yeah. but if you came out of your break better, like you'd be unstoppable. Yeah. Because even then, like, he should have some more separation than that, but it's still good ball by O'Connell. All right. So so this, this is the uh, first drive of the game. We got second and two here. You know, I kind of want to show this play. You know, it just shows how fast he is in his release. But a little bit of, you know, why he reminds me of Deshaun Jackson because he can't, you know, rise up and <laughs> – do a contested catch which for you. You better throw a good damn ball to him. All right, so so, so so here we go. But his release is so good. So here here he's one on one here with Michael Davis here. He just right. It's just he just, you see him get right. Ooh. He he gets his balance here. He gets level, and then he goes right around with a great arm over, and he's gone. And this isn't a terrible ball from O'Connell. It really isn't. He still because he still gives him a, a chance to catch this ball. But you kind of can mm -hmm. see how you know it. When you have a fast guy like this, you have to lead him because you you respect him to make yeah. the play. Good luck. What I will say too is is Tucker can help himself out a little bit by stacking, doing a better job of stacking. Uh, yeah, Davis on there. He kind of invites him mm -hmm. back into the play a little bit by not getting back on top of him. He started to a little bit, and then like he kind of veers back outside. It looks like we're a little weird. Yeah, and it, it, he kind of should have high pointed this football a little bit, but 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 that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what that's why he reminds me of Deshaun Jackson so much. Because if you didn't lead Deshaun Jackson, you might throw a pick. <laughs> it's a pick. <laughs> <It's, it's, laughs> but the release is so good. Like, yeah, yeah, I think they are, man. He's bigger though, which I'll show you. I'm gonna show you that his best play of the game was not even anything he ran, not not a route he ran, but just the release. His release is so good, man. That's why I think he could be like a 50, 50 catch, eleven hundred good yard guy. You know what I mean? Like he just yeah. <laughs> like, like you only got to get him sixty balls. It doesn't have to be a lot. All right, all right. So this is his best play of the game, though. Okay, this is his best play of the game here. We got uh, Brandon Bolden here on this little wild, uh, wild cat run where, you know, you got Aiden O'Connell outside here. Definitely got the, the Chargers off balance. But this block he puts on Derwin James is the is why this is a touchdown. Okay, so watch this block he puts on him. Ooh. That's, that's why I asked, what's wrong with Derwin James? I was like, what's going on? Look at that block, well, bro. Yeah. I would think Terwin Davis probably wants to line himself up outside of uh, Trey Tucker there to force it but back he's inside. Five, nine, he's 5'9", 180. He's 5'9", 180, yeah. man. He's 5'9", 180. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, he's, there's no reason why Terwin Davis should be getting blocked by him. <laughs> Look at the block, bro. He opens up the whole play. I mean, I, Mumford and, you know, I think it's Mayor do a good job here too, but – where's Meredith? But good Lord. <laughs> That is a damn block. You see better from this side here. 
Hey, look at this block, man. <laughs> like, Daryl James is trying to fight through it. He's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> look at them. I mean, it's a great block for Meredith. And, you know, Mumford got up on Davis real quick. But, man, that that was his best play of the game, in my opinion. But that's, that just shows how tough he is as a player. Yeah. And Rod really like him. All right. So, uh, let's get into Dylan Parham a little bit as a center. Okay. So, we're going to go over some of his past stuff first. We're just gonna watch how 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 these guys communicate with some of these some of these uh, pass protectors. You see him; he's just this, this is him just being a good pass protector that he always already is. Really good pass protector. See here, he got his hands inside right there. Balance. That's a kind of get that ball off. So yeah, he, he did a pretty good job in pass protection, in my opinion. Especially when they they call it true sets, which they had a lot. They had nineteen true sets, which is probably the most they've had, like play action wow. screens or whatever. So uh, here's another one here. This, this you see the communication. You see the communication that they're having already between him <laughs> and Van Roden and Meredith. You see it. That was a yeah. big part of this game. They communicated so well. You see it here. They're able to handle a stunt really well because of it. Him and Meredith. I mean, yeah. Bonford gets his butt kicked, but that's okay. <laughs> we're getting the ball rid of the ball quick. <laughs> and I like, too, that he's the one this, taking command. Go ahead. Here. Go ahead. I was going to say, I like here that he's the one taking command here. Like, because, like, like, Colton Miller, obviously out. Obviously out. Um, Obviously, Meredith back up in. Van Ruten just on the team this year. So, like, Someone had to step up and be the communicator in the middle, and I like that Parham took that responsibility on. Yeah, man. All right, here's another one here. On the first down, we get the first down here. Uh, I like this one just, just because, you know, he's just setting up these guys perfectly, right? So we'll see it here once again. They're going to communicate a little bit. You see, you know, Mumford. And Meredith do a good job picking up this stunt over here. And then nobody's coming over here. We get we allow O'Connell to do little eye stuff and get Mon uh Michael Mayer wide open. I tell you O'Connell, he, he, he got called out, man. He doing eye manipulation and stuff. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> All right, <laughs> for real. So, all right, so here's another one here. I really like this one too. You see, see, you know, uh, I think Thule is coming around the corner here on a stunt. And Parham, he does a good job of coming back and helping out Meredith here. So, right, he passes him off to Van Roden. Van Roden does a good job picking that guy up. And then he comes over here and he's helping Meredith. So you can just tell, like, his awareness as the center too is pretty damn good. I almost like him better at center than guard. I know. I just, just, just watch this. Like, wow. <laughs> All right, here's another way. Here we get play action on this one. We get another stunt. But what I love about this one is the late recovery stunt on there, right? Which allows him kind of get this ball off, which, you know, of course, it's not a completion. But, I mean, I, this is pretty impressive to me. Yeah. I don't know what you think, Matt. Right, because you yeah, cause no, that's, just that's... just because to see the stunt, and and yes, guys, Mumford was getting his butt kicked a little bit. It was it was hidden, <laughs> but he was getting <laughs> booty beat him so quick. But yeah, yeah, Parham. I mean, as the center man, <laughs> he played pretty damn well. Just to pick it up the stunt like this, because even let's say Mumford is not getting beat, I'm mad because Jacoby Myers is, is running wide open. And the reason why O'Connell forced it to Adams here is because he's about to get his legs taken out. Because Jacoby Myers is literally running wide open. But if Mumford didn't get beat here, Parham gives him a chance to step up and hit Myers. He played pretty well at center, That's man. Beautiful. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. I don't know if it's the wrong place here yet. 
All right. Still some more practice plays here. Another pickup right here. Now, now, now this one I wanted to show like he's a little bit of play strength liability. So, I mean, it's still there. So, you know, you got Brandon mm -hmm. Williams and the Ravens or something. He might bully him a little bit. But you kind of see he gets a little wide here on this one, too. And you kind of see him get pu pushed back. You kind of force O'Connell, kind of forces his ball a little bit. Yeah, two things that kind of stand out. Wide hands and not poor pad level. Mm -hmm. No knee bend. Yeah. This guy in his chest and uh, can't struggle to drop the anchor. Is that Morgan Fox too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Morgan Fox is a good, good uh, interior rusher too. Can't do that against that guy. No, you cannot. All right, here we go. Little play action. Oh no! Oh no! Where the, where the run plays? Where the run plays? Here we go. All right. First run play here. Little duo. You see the push he's getting on uh, on this on this run. Yeah, yeah I think it's what uh, Joseph Day right. Get a little help. You see the push he's getting there. Yeah. He had a pretty good game at center, man. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty decent. <laughs> now, now here, here's another one here. You're getting a little split inside zone here. I just like I I, I like this how. Uh, you know, he does a good job getting to the second level here. Abdullah just had a really good game running the football. He, he has some damn good vision. He was able to make this run pretty well. Van Roden ball, too, man. He had a really damn good game. You see Van Roden getting some movement. You see, But you see, I, I, it, just, it just felt like they were playing better. I just felt like there were more continuity here. <laughs> like, it, it, just, it was, like, more fluid. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but, uh, Matt, you see it. You see it, right? It just, it just looked yeah, more fluid, no, yeah. right? Like, the... the <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, the one thing that like, like too, like with Andre James, like, like you kind of pointed it out a lot. Like he's so quick to just get off the line, and like almost like he's like worried about only what he's doing, and whereas like Parham, I feel like he's actually mm -hmm. helping out his teammates a little bit, helping out the guys, and still getting his assignment, which is a sign of a a good center. Yes, you see, you see here, he does a good job of just. You know, getting to the second level here, get on the linebacker. It's a good block by Van Roden. And look, Abdullah, he's balling, bro. Do the ball, too. Let me give him some more carries, I believe. Keep him going a little bit. All right, last one here. See, see him do a good job on this lead power here. Kind of just get a late linebacker. He's able to kind of get off his combo block. See it, get off the combo block, make that block right there. Allow Zamir White to have a little bit of a hole there. You know what I mean? So I, I really like this block. I mean, Mer Meredith, because Meredith is the one who's losing here, basically. Morgan Fox kind of controls him the whole way. If Meredith has a little bit of a better block, it looks better. But you see Parham, great recovery there. That's that's Matlock. So man, I, sorry about that. But uh <laughs> Parham looked really good at center. I thought he had the, those guys, those guys looking fluid. You know what I mean? Um it, it made me like want to go look at the guards in the draft. That's what I did. <laughs> want to go look at the guards in the draft because I'm like, you just move Parham to center. I mean, maybe even bring Van Roten back because I think Van Roten's playing pretty damn well. He had a he he balled this game. You know, I, I really could have yeah. did him, but I really want to show how. Parham had everybody going and doing stunts and doing all the right things and stuff like that. So um, I, I thought Van Roten is playing pretty well, um, but Parham is the center, dude. That's the center. Yeah. Part of me kind of, I mean, this probably probably shouldn't admit this out loud, but part of me kind of hopes under James' injury lingers <laughs> a little bit. So maybe we get another game, maybe we get to finish the season, seeing what Parham can do at center and like kind of evaluate it from that. Because yeah, what you showed, like that was the most like, in sync, I think I've seen the offensive line play this year. Just what, um, uh, you know, our little breakdowns like, like they looked like they were actually on the same page and like getting so much more like hat on a hat, which is what we saw a little bit more last year than, and uh, we haven't seen as much this year, especially in the running game. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm kind of interested. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued now. I kind of hope, uh, <laughs> hope we can see a little bit more of Parham um, to finish out the year at center. So, 
Yeah, because I mean, j- just the way they looked overall, man, they, they they just look so more just fluid. You know what I mean? Like they look like they all like look like an offensive line. They, I mean, we, that's how they're supposed to look. They look supposed to look all together. You know what I mean? Not just yeah. a bunch of guys doing their own damn thing. They, you know, they, they look like they were like a group. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's the best way to explain it because. Yeah, that's that's. And what I, I think like kind of what you're talk, what you're touching on earlier, where like, okay, Meredith didn't play that well, but it didn't matter because you know everyone else is doing well. Um, Thayer Munford was getting beat, but you know everyone else is holding up their blocks, and that's kind of what we're talking about too. Like, when you can get five offensive linemen that are on the same page, like you can cover up one guy's mistake on a play a little bit, a little mm-hmm. better. Like, and, I mean, so far, like the sample size is uh is swinging in Parham's favor over James, who's again gonna be a free agent in the off season. I don't. I don't know if you bring him back at this point. So no, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'd almost rather uh, start watching some guards because either way, even if they re-sign Van Roten, they got to you got to think they're going to draft the guard because he's what like 34 years old, 34 years yeah. old, something like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, to be honest, because you know, uh, you know, in true pass sets, as I was talking about, like in true pass sets, and there's some times and some stunts where he, he can lose some things and stuff like that, but. <laughs> Um, and true pass sets at center, he looked really good. I thought he looked pretty decent in the run game, and uh, he had the other guys ready. I think him and Van Roden worked extremely well together, right? Um, but he had Meredith, you know, who was getting his ass kicked, looking nobody noticing it. So I think that was a big part of the game too, because he, Meredith did not play well individually, <laughs> but yeah, mixed in, it was all good. But yeah, Trey Tucker, you know, Trey Tucker, he, yeah. Yeah, th- that dude is a ten-year NFL player because he's just gets so fast and he's so tough that if, even if the Raiders don't like him, there's some like Sean McVay or something if he's still coaching. You know, that's that's the <laughs> he blocks Mike McDaniel. The, the, you know, he blocks yeah. in the run in the run game and he's tough and he is fast as hell. You know, hopefully he can work on his his route running and maybe he can get a little better there. But yeah, a lot of upside. Definitely. I feel like that's that's the the one thing that's concerning about Trey Tucker is like that was the big knock on him and like kind of still is. I mean, it's only been a year, but like yeah, like we're still sitting here saying like yeah, he could kind of work on his route running a little bit and loosen up those hips a little bit more. Maybe that's something that he just fixes in the off season. But encouraging, man. We'll see how it how it unfolds this week. A little bit of a, I think this game's gonna be a little bit tighter than uh, than last Thursday night. I think so. Yeah, no six three twenty one this week. I mean, that'd be uh, nice. Yeah. I think G6 that's a safe bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, oh that'd be great. All right. Uh, any last that? Any last thoughts? Any last thoughts here? Last thoughts. Um, I mean, not much, man. I mean, like we said, pretty dominant game. Um, we'll see how uh, how sustainable it is. I got a little bit more to play for. The, the Chiefs have a little bit more to play for than the Chargers did going into this one. So. Uh, We'll see how it goes. Hopefully they can keep it up again. Hopefully we can see more Dylan Parham at center and uh, Malcolm Coons continue to ascend and Jack Jones and Trey Tucker keep uh, keep showing more promise. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, Malcolm Coons looked terrific. <laughs> that, was, that, that was exciting to watch. I was like, God damn. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was Slater a just in a, in a blender. He, is, he, was, he was probably in shock. He's like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, and Slater's a damn good tackle, man. He's one of the, know, the up and coming left tackles in the league. So, but that was just like savvy just to, to do this the, the uh, bull rush a little bit and then chop under. Just, the wow, yeah, yeah. That's that, that. Like I said, man, that's what got me really excited. I'm like, okay, he's he was a guy that he was a guy that uh, went after the quarterback. Now, now he's rushing the passer. You know what I mean? <laughs> one of those stupid th- sayings that don't mean any that don't really mean anything, but like. That's what it makes sense. Sense. That, that it doesn't make sense and makes complete sense at the at the same time. Yeah, it makes complete sense, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, we're out of here. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We're out. Peace.